today we're checking out another mill after checking out Jaredale in a previous video. This one is special because it's the only intact remaining example of a mill that entirely ran off steam in WA, as far as I'm aware. It ran up until the 1970s, so it was even unusual at the time. It's derelict and abandoned now, but right next door to it, where the mill town used to be, is actually a holiday park. And I actually stayed there when I was young, very young. I have a couple of memories of it, enough to uh, be reminded of it when I started doing research. So that is an active holiday park. It is right next to this abandoned mill. This, sorry, this abandoned mill. So I'm unsure if we'll be able to get access or not. That's how you do it in Timbertown. Well, by golly, this thing is huge and in a very bad condition. So this started out as a timber mill in 1909 and it was called something like the Donnelly Carry and Jarra Company. Although another source cites that the name was simply Wheatley Mill. Wheatley mill. And I think there's actually a couple of sources I call it Wheatley Mill, so let's just stick with that. And I do have a photo of that, which I'll put up on screen now. Wheatley Mill was a small fruit case cutting mill, and it was purchased by the Wheatley family for £1,000. They enlarged the mill to cut carry and jarrah wood, as per the name. The primary business was producing telegraph poles for the government and jarrah for mine sites. They sold the mill in 1912, and it closed in 1914. I'm guessing because of a, a big event going on that year. So, Bunnings Brothers, yes, the same Bunnings you're thinking of, the same Bunnings from Jarradale as well, decided to build a new mill here on the site of that other mill in 1947, but they changed the name to Donnelly River, which stays to this day. This was a boom time for timber, thanks to World War II ending. The mill was powered by a Roby branded single cylinder steam engine, which came all the way from England, so it was handy that a river flowed right past as they would have needed a lot of water for the boilers and whatever else. Construction of the current structure commenced in 1948 at the cost of £100,000, and that excluded the cost to build an extra 19 kilometres of railway to here from Yornup. The mill opened officially in 1950. So, a little bit more on the railway. So, that ran, like I said, between here and Yornup. It was actually the last privately run timber railway in Western Australia. One of the locomotives used is now at the Railway Heritage Museum in Bassendine, which I've visited since I used to live in Basso, and it's claimed online that another is on display at the Bow Catter Bunnings. But trust me, that is very out of date information. A quick street view check disproves that immediately. The locomotive was moved from Bow Catter to the Yarloop Steam Museum in the early 1990s. However, there was a devastating bushfire there in 2016 that basically wiped Yarloop off the map. However, the actual locomotive itself is still there. I spotted it on street view and, and on maps, and I actually visited Yarloop on the way up here, and I found it. So they're currently reconstructing the railway yard, and it's, uh, it's, you know, it's going to be like a cultural centre and a museum, but the locomotive itself is slated for restoration, so that's good. Both locomotives around here will live on another day. So what I'm standing on right now is the remains of the kilns. I've gleamed that from a map and an old aerial photo, which is very high quality. So shout out to the State Library for both of those. In front of us was actually a really massive shed where they planard the wood. They, you know, smoothed it down and whatnot. It seems to be a slightly newer structure than the rest here. Aerial photography only goes back to the 80s where it all been demolished by that point. So I'm not exactly sure when it was built. So here we can see the remains of the boilers. There would have been three very large turrets here at one point, or maybe there was four. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Anyway, the town site, which is over there, was built after the mill over the next few years. It included living quarters, a school, a general store, a butcher's, and even a social club. By the 1960s, it was operated by 120 men and processed 25,000 superfeet of timber per day. And I'm not exactly sure what a superfeet is. Apparently, it was, well, maybe superfoot, I should say. I'm not exactly sure what a superfoot is. Apparently, it also produced 300,000 fruit cases per year for the WA apple industry, keeping it to its early 1900s roots. Here we can see the remains of some railway lines. Always a favourite of mine to spot. I don't know what it is. I just really love 
abandoned railway lines and abandoned railway line infrastructure. But there were a few lines running around here. I think the main line was actually running in front of the building up there. So here's another view of the boilers. As we can see, they're in a pretty sorry state. Especially that little building over there, it's half gone. So, speaking of mills in bad states, this one only operated for 29 years and it closed in 1978. This is due to a forest department policy to close less efficient mills. I think by that point they were probably running out of old growth forests. So luckily they stopped and we do have at least a couple to enjoy today. Bunnings were going to donate the land and the buildings to the Crown. However, while equipment would usually be transferred elsewhere, the steam operated machines were out of date even back then. So that's why this place is still intact apart from the uh, you know, the derelict, derelict nature of it. So these days the mill is still government owned. Let's get it focused in there. So a museum did run on this site at some point. I'm not entirely sure when. I'm going to guess sometime in the 1980s, probably after all those other structures were demolished. But the fence around this property is in quite good condition. I was surprised there's no holes. Usually I'm pretty good at finding holes, but I don't know if I want to go in there to be honest. It's, it's uh, pretty nasty in there. Cool, but nasty. So judging by photos I've, I've seen, there was a railway line just sort of running along here as well. And in there is the company town. I won't be filming too much in there because it is private property. But it seems like a a pretty awesome place to stay. There's no phone reception out here. I don't think there's any television. But there is a lot of kangaroos and a lot of emus apparently. So far we've just seen a couple of kangaroos hanging out. So here's some information about the museum. I'm sorry if that's not focusing. As per usual, I can barely see my screen. The sun is also in a pretty bad spot, shining right onto where I want to film. But, you know, you just need to have a look at this bit of roof that's completely collapsed. It's in very bad condition. So you can see in the bushes there, there is a lot of the accommodation, which were the original residences by, which were lived in by the people who worked in the mill. And this structure here is a sorting table. There were two structures like this. The other one was, I think, around here somewhere, but that has also been demolished. So speaking of residences, or residents, I should say, by 1981, going, you know, sort of three or four years after the mill had closed, only 10 residents remained. And not long after that, there was only one residence, and his name was Jack. And we're going to go to Jack's house right now. So according to the map I have, this was called the fire hole. At least that's what it says on the map. It says stone wall, fire hole. <laughs> so I guess it was a hole where there was fire. Anyway, onto Jack's house. So up there is the old locomotive shed, which has now been renovated and turned into accommodation. But here we have Jack's shack. I'm not entirely sure which shack was Jack's. I think it's the one closest to the road, but who is Jack? Well, his full name was Jack Serena, or Serena. He was born in 1903, where the border for Croatia and Austria now is. He began work at the mill in 1953 and decided to stay after the mill closed, even among all the other, beyond all the other residences. Even though he didn't technically own the cottage he lived in, I guess no one had the heart to kick him out. It was essentially an abandoned mill by that point. He lived there until 1997, until his health took a turn and he was moved to the Bridgetown Hospital. He passed away in 1999, aged 96. So we don't have any asbestos warning signs here, but there is still furniture and stuff in there. We've got a bed, we've got a chair, we've got a door frame. What else do you need? So, very small, very quaint very similar to the uh, single men cottages we looked at in Jaredale, but this one's even in even worse shape than those were. I did read that his shack was blue, so 
It's possible this, this was just an outhouse of some description, I'm sure. There's a few other structures around. Looks like this may have been a chicken coop or something like that. Who's to say? So there's Sears Road, which comes off the Brockman Highway, <laughs> goes over the Donnelly River, which is down there. And Oak and I are actually staying on the Donnelly River in Bridgetown. It's very nice. So that's the Poop Shack over there, and Jack Shack, which you can barely see is blue. I wrote in my notes that it was probably blue, so. Oh, there is? Okay, well, we'll go check that out. But, as we can see there is the bedroom. So there is calls to have Jack Shack, Jack's Shack renovated and restored, as he is considered a bit of a local legend around here. A lot of people have memories, I was reading on Facebook, of revisiting Donnelly River even years after they finished working here and, you know, apparently it was just reliable to see Jack here sitting out the front of his shack, waving at everyone, waving at everyone who came in. It's going to crawl into the B area here, hopefully they don't mind. If I get stung on camera, I guess that'll be funny. But yeah. Not much going on in there, and obviously not much restoration has happened. Obviously I'm in, in two minds about it. I want it to look derelict, because it will look awesome, but also for such historic structure. It's a shame to see it just slowly crumble away. But there we go, there's the photo I have in the 1950s. And here's a photo I don't have of him retired in the 1980s. So good to see he lived for another 20 years after that photo was taken. And here is the Donnelly River, which is uh, not very high flowing in this part of the river. Driving here from Bridgetown, you see some bits of it. It's quite wide. Where we're staying is quite wide as well. Yeah, it's a bit more busy over there, a bit more flowy. Uh, there is a dam beyond there, as far as I'm aware. I nearly didn't notice, but this, this bridge is made out of tree logs at the bottom. Seems to be a very common theme around here, which absolutely makes a lot of sense, because you would use what you have available to you. So speaking of single men's quarters, uh, those buildings themselves are long demolished, but here's where they showered. So, got some water tanks over there, and plus, Whatever this humongous thing is, I think it's possibly also a water tank, maybe just an older version. It's so rusted out we can see inside of it. Yeah, wow. It's pretty old, whatever it is. I'm just shut out to this forest. We're pretty deep. I think we're, I think we're in the uh, Nanup State Forest at the moment. This is basically the only settlement for, I don't know, maybe 50 kilometers in every, every other direction. So we have the remains of something else here. We've got some old pipe and bits of metal and other fun stuff. Here we have the remains of the water heater. Another awesome piece of old industrial equipment. Certainly much bigger than the water heater we have at the, at the place we're staying. It couldn't even fill up the spa bath. And here is the remains of the shower block, which is very slowly disappearing into the bush. It's basically the only ruin we have because, like I said, most of the town is now a holiday park. The only reason I know this is a shower block is because I read it online. I guess that would have been the urinal. But all the footing, fittings have been taken out. Hopefully it's not too dark in here. I'm too lazy to pull my torch out. I 
Maybe that was a urinal, or a different urinal. It's very urinal shaped. Maybe it's just a ruin that looks like a urinal. I guess we'll never know. Okay, well, I guess they figured out that it was a shower block by this sign, because I, for some reason I just have, for some reason I'll just walk to something through the bush. I just won't follow tracks, I don't know why. But there's a photo of the single men's huts, and apparently these were demolished in the late 70s when the mill closed. And here we have old mate Sonny Parkinson. Looks like he's ready for a shower. So after everyone had moved out, besides from Jack, the town site became a holiday park in 1982, and it remains a holiday park to this day. As such, it's an excellent surviving example of a period mill town. It's been perfectly preserved otherwise. The mill itself is the only remaining example of one that used steam, so it is really a shame to see it in this state, especially since both the mill and the town were heritage listed in 2006. So I can't believe they've just left this to ruin. There is, however, a non-profit organisation called Save Donnelly Mill Incorporated, which was created in 2018. You can check out a link in the description if you wish to donate or just check out what their story is. It is a shame I couldn't get in myself, but it does look pretty dangerous, so maybe that's for the best. On that, on that website, they do have a full high-definition video of inside of the mill from 2018, so you can see what it's like. All the equipment's still in there, so like I said, it would have been cool to get in, but it is what it is. This fence is surprisingly good, and I'm just, I'm on holiday. I'm not in the sort of mood to climb over fences today. Regardless, that's all we have for today. If you liked watching this, please hit that subscribe button and like both for my ego, but also to help with the YouTube algorithm. The more people that subscribe, the more people YouTube will show the video, video to, et cetera, et cetera. You know the drill. But that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.